So this is alright, like this. The next slice on the brain looks like this, still on the right. Goes on like this. So if you have a 3D brain, it's just 2D arrays laid on top of each other. It's simply number in array format. All right, we can try opening the data. So if you know how to connect to no machine, please connect to a one of your favorite server. So this is my no, no machine. What you do is you click on applications and they go system tools and then click on terminal. Then you receive a terminal. But what you do in the beginning, typically in PNL, is resource information saved for people in PNL. So we can know where is the software, where is the data, and so on. So what we do is a source. Basha V3. My terminal is loading the information saved in this file and then pulling them up on my environment. This is um, definitely slower than usual. But anyway, once you source it, you will be able to use the same command line that I will be using, which is um, I'm going to load the image using FSL eyes. And the example data is in here. I'm going to open them. FSL eyes and data. PNL, KHO, example data, and then T1 weighted, and there will be T1 weighted image. I'm going to open them like this. Then you receive a sign like this. Here it is. Um, this is an example of T1 data. Green crosshair that you see is the voxel that is selected. So I'm going to select corpus callosum here. Then you'll be able to see a value here, 110. So that's 110. Let's go to a CSF area. Here is 18. So this was brighter, higher number, darker, lower number. The gray meter is somewhere between like 61. Literally, they're just looking to on the right. So you can find the location of voxel using a number like this. So 60, 60, 60 is here. And if you want to look at the coordinates, if you click here, so if you click a cerebellum, then your coordinate is here. Okay. So say um, the white matter had intensity of 110, you can also threshold the images that you see by controlling the minimum. Well, I would like to remove everything that has intensity of 80. And now everything below 80 goes away. Also, you can try playing around with changing colors. You need to change it to red maps, blue, and different colors. But literally, you are working with an array. Okay. So if you click on this uh, settings button, there's a bunch of other information that you can control. Well, there's a, so you can play around with it. Um, it breaks nothing, so you can pl click on anything. You can also change your views. You can also focus on specific axis that you want to, and you can take a screenshot of the data. You can also zoom in to a region. Now you will be able to see voxels more clearly. So here, lighter. 110, here, darker, 100. So it's an array. As long as you understand this is an array, that's good for today. There's a way to look at histogram of the data. So go to view and click on histogram. When you click that, you will see a histogram of all the voxels. So what it means is that there are many, many voxels that has intensity between 105 and 120. I just wonder what that is. What I do is do 110 to 120. Set it as 100. There are many voxels, which is represented here. So why matter? Okay. That's just a T1. 
Well, have a play around, but I'm happy that if you got the concept that neural image data is an array. Okay, let's close it. And I'm going to open diffusion data. So diffusion data is in a similar format. So on the example data, there's a diffusion, dwi, dwi.nii.gz. You can open it the same way as you open D1 Maps. Sorry, Kevin, I have a couple questions. I was wondering, like, what the histogram, like, represents, like, what does that we would like to um, differentiate gray matter, white matter, and CSF. So the one way that we can do that simply is just to threshold them by how bright they are. So it's black, white, it's gray. What we do from the histogram, and you know, when we thresholded them between 100 and 120, we knew that they were white matter, 100 and 120. So they are mostly white matters. So previously, like we could have selected by looking at the histogram, give me the white matter area by cutting out all the voxels that's below 100, above 120. And also it, it shows a, a lot of um, characteristics of the data. For example, here, there's a little peaks it means the data is not smooth. It's a one way to summarizing a lot of voxels with different intensities. That's how you use them. So is the histogram for like all of the voxels? Like yeah. Okay. All the voxels okay. in the image. Maybe for like only a small amount, like if you're looking at a smaller area? I think that's possible, but I don't know how to do that in a FSO view. Sorry, I'm not sure. So that's what we're going to do next with Python. Yeah. In terms of differentiating between the different intensities and colors? Could mm -hmm. that work for differentiating between different components of the green? Or is it only useful in terms of white matter? For the T1 maps, as you, as you saw, oh, yeah. the brightness differences between uh, different structures, like frontal and temporal, is not so great. It's, they are almost the same. So you won't be able to use that information. Yep, so let's do the same thing in the diffusion. So this is the diffusion map opened in FSL view. Um, it's a little darker here, so you can go around it and look at how the intensity changes. Since this EPI map, you have brighter regions in the CSF, darker in other tissue. In the sulcus and gyrus, you can see CSF infusing here. Okay, let's do histogram here. So click on histogram. Here you can see most of the data, most of the voxels have intensity less than 500. But as you can see, my maximum is set as 3000 because there are a few voxels that go over very high value, but most of them lies here. Let me threshold them by 500. So now you can look better how it looks like. Okay. One thing to note is that the volume tab is live for this one. So for T1 maps, this was locked. So you couldn't control this. But now, you can go to the next map. So I told you before that diffusion weighted image is a bunch of 3D maps concatenated together. So this map is brighter. The first volume is brighter than the other maps. So first volume here is the standard map called V0 map in diffusion. So what we do is we compare intensity attenuation in each volume compared to the first B0 volume, and then we calculate diffusion from that. You don't have to understand that, it's fine. As long as you understand this array, I'm happy. So click on um, setting the, um, the view and click on time series. So here, um, now you can see the information of different volumes. So, in the voxel that I'm at right now, in the volume zero, which is the first volume, the intensity was 156, as shown here, but it goes down in the next volume, and then goes up again and fluctuates. Let's go to CSF. So here uh, you can see it is very bright in the first volume, then the signal attenuates, the, the brightness is, again, back to very high in volume 10 and volume 31, a few times across the volume. From this uh, time series map, we can refer to how many B0 maps 
the standard map that we want to compare the diffusion weighted volume to, there are, you know, in our image. So there are one, two, three, four, five B0 standard maps that we use to compare each volumes to calculate diffusion. So um, these are just way of studying your, your array, which is complex because it's just so large, but there are tools like this. But again, I'll be happy if you understand them as voxels. So next one, uh, I have a little Python snippet that we can practice together. So once you source that, you'll be able to use PNL Python. So I'll just go to Python. So what I do after loading into Python, I'm going to load the map um, just to show you that these are actual numbers. So import nibabel, which is a tool to load nifty maps. And then I'm going to import uh, Metro library, which is the graph function in Python. Then I'm going to just load the nifty file that I showed you before. So T1 image is a, I'm using the Babel module. I'm going to load the data, which is in show example data and T1 weighted, T1 weighted nifty. Okay. Yeah, the whole point of doing this is just show you they are numbers in this, top of this. So you can also check um, the shape of array, how it, it is shaped. So it is 256 and 256 like this, and then it is stacked like, like here, 256 stacked on top of each other. Wait, let me select a brain axis that is on the 150th, 50th slice like this. Then let me look at the shape. So this will represent a single horizontal image in your brain, which has 256 and then 256 values. Okay, let me show you this. Okay, so these are single X in your 3D map. Okay, I, I can send you other examples, but I think this is enough for the first time. So just please remember the numbers and yeah. So um, this is a summary of uh, today. So data is... Neuroimaging data is all right, and uh, there are a bunch of experts working in the neuroimaging field. It is just not single topic, it's a very wide um, field. Yeah. Thanks. Well, if you guys clap, um, Zoom automatically like muted you. I didn't hear a clapping.